Hello and welcome to the third in our series of Contour for Mac tutorials. We're glad you're here. Now in our first tutorial we covered how to install and register the software. In the second tutorial we covered screenwriting basics and the theory behind Contour and in this tutorial we'll be going on a tour of the software, how to outline your first screenplay in Contour, as well as exploring other features of the software. Let's get started. Let's go on a tour of Contour. At the top extending almost the entire width of the window is the progress bar. Now the progress bar provides you with a way to track your progress as you develop your screenplay. When you enter information into one of the fields in the center, that corresponding section is filled in on the slider to show you that it's been completed. Now keep in mind that it will not be filled in until you move to another field. To the left is the Screenplays pane. This displays a list of the screenplays you're currently working on as well as some that we provided to you as examples. At the bottom of the pane are the Add button, the Delete button, the Information button, as well as the Search field. To the far right are two other panes and two buttons. The top pane is the Tips area in which you can receive tips on how to construct a particular section of your screenplay. The bottom pane provides you with examples for Act 1 only. Examples for Act 2 and Act 3 can be found in the examples we provided for you such as Slumdog Millionaire, Silence of the Lambs, Kung Fu Panda, American Beauty, and Spider-Man 2. Keep in mind that the panes on the far right are for informational purposes only. You won't be entering anything into those panes. Down below the examples pane are two buttons. To the left is the ideas button. Pressing the button will bring up the ideas pane where you can store random ideas, bits, and snippets of genius. The guide button, when clicked, provides you with a pop-up window which displays a breakdown of your script as it falls within the contour method. At the very top of the screen are drop-down menus. Most of the menu items are self-explanatory. We'll cover the menu items requiring further explanation as we go. Alright, let's start a new screenplay. You can either click on the Add button down at the bottom left hand corner of your screen, or choose File New Screenplay from the menus at the top. For our example, we're going to call this Spider-Man 2. We'd like to give credit where credit is due, and for this screenplay, it was courtesy of the great Alvin Sargent. In the Date field, enter the date where you first start your screenplay. Now identify the genre. Use the pull-down menu. Finally, identify the source. Use the pull-down menu. When you're done, close the window. The first thing we need to do is to define what our screenplay is about. Thus, we need to answer four basic questions. Those questions are, who is the main character? What is the main character trying to accomplish? Who is trying to stop the main character? And what happens if the main character fails? Let's take a few moments right now to enter that information and let's use Spider-Man 2 as an example. First, who is the main character? Of course, it's Peter Parker. Next, what is Peter Parker trying to accomplish? He's trying to lead a normal life despite his secret identity. So, enter that. Who is trying to stop the main character? Who is it? It's none other than Doc Ock. Finally, let's answer the question, what happens if the main character fails? It's pretty simple. A lot of people are going to die, including Mary Jane. The next section is the archetypes. If you remember from our last tutorial, our main character, aka the protagonist, goes through a series of journeys where he assumes different roles. The orphan, the wanderer, the warrior, and the martyr. If you haven't seen the last tutorial, you might want to check it out before you move any further. Again, we have a series of four questions. In Act 1, Peter Parker is an orphan because he's on his own, living alone, and heck, we all know that there's only one Spider-Man. He's unique, singular. So let's answer the question. Next, let's answer the question, how is he a wanderer in Act 2? Simple, he tries to find himself without being Spider-Man. 
Let's add that. Moving on to the third question. How is Peter Parker a warrior in Act 2? Peter fights Octavius to save New York City and Mary Jane. Finally, we've moved on to Act 3. How is Peter Parker a martyr? If you remember, Peter gives up Mary Jane because he knows that there's no way that she can be safe with him. In the contour screenplay structure method, the third important step in the process is to come up with the formula of your screenplay. This formula combines and summarizes your character's journey as he passes through the archetypes. Let's go through the formula. When a type of person has, does, wants, gets A, he gets, does, tries, learns B, only to discover that C now happens and he must respond by doing D. That's a lot to swallow. Let's break it down into sections starting with the A section. In this statement, we provide a description of the protagonist and what he does during the first act as the orphan. Remember that we're describing the protagonist, not just slapping a name on him. We wouldn't describe Elliot in E.T. as just a boy. We'd describe him as a lonely boy. In this case, let's use our buddy Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man. Let's try this on for size. When a misfit with spider powers realizes that he no longer wants to be a superhero, here we're describing that he's an orphan and that he takes some type of action. Let's enter that much into the formula pane. So there's our A statement. Let's continue. Now that we're in the first half of Act 2, where our protagonist is in his wanderer phase, we add the wanderer or B statement. In Peter Parker's case, this would be his B statement. And as we know, Peter flops as a normal person. That is in his destiny. Let's move on to the warrior phase. This is the C statement, or the warrior statement, which describes the second half of Act 2. Our protagonist is thrust into a high-stakes conflict in some way, shape, or form. In Peter's case, he has to save Mary Jane, who has been kidnapped by Doc Ock. Our C statement would then be... Okay, so now we're into Act 3, where our protagonist moves from warrior to martyr. He's going to give it all up in some way, shape, or form. He's going to die, either literally or figuratively. This is our D statement. In Act 3 of Spider-Man 2, during the battle between Spider-Man and Doc Ock, Doc Ock destroys the reactor and goes to his watery grave. But there's a larger question. What is Peter going to do about Mary Jane, who now knows his true identity? He gives her up. He's the martyr. Part of him dies. In Titanic, Jack dies saving Rose. In Slumdog Millionaire, Jamal lays 20 million rupees on the line, hoping that he can connect with Latika somehow. So there it is, the formula. And if you take a look at the 50 highest grossing films of all time, you'll see that they incorporate this formula in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so that wraps it up for this contour tutorial. For more information, check out our fourth and final tutorial in our series. You can also find out more by checking out our user's guide, and you can always contact us through the web. But for now, though, write some good stuff today.